Hi, my name is Christoph Liss and uh, in this very short video I will show you how I am using Redshift and Substance Designer to texture an object with zero UV at all. I'm not doing any kind of uh, compositing or other tricks. What you see is what you get. I'm rendering that in engine. I can rotate the object, everything follow. You can see sticker on the object and still there is no UV. So um, to give you a little bit of background, a uh, couple of days ago, uh, yesterday actually to be honest, I did post something uh, on Facebook, I did post a picture and I got a lot and lot and lot of questions about how did I achieve it. And I got a couple of messages telling me that I was a liar and that it was not possible to text you anything with no UV. Uh, to which I replied to those people to check the work from Torfric because he's doing it all the time in Modo and his work is amazing. So I will then give you a brief overview of how I do it and I will probably later down the road do a more in-depth uh, video tutorial but let's look at what we have first we have the ship here in front of us right I can assure you there is no UV at all and I will show you later so I am using Substance Designer to generate a tileable texture I am using Maya projection tree planar and planar and a cylindrical actually for the mud what else am I using am I using Redshift for the rendering but what I do on Redshift, I'm pretty sure you can do it in V-Ray, probably in Montal Ray also, Montal Ray, I'm also sure you can do it, and maybe in uh, Arnold, but I'm not too sure. Anyway, let's look at it. First, if you use Redshift, I will invite you to go in on YouTube and check the Redshift to Maya tutorial number six by Saul Espino. He explained how to use the curvature node and the layering of noise to break the, the result of the curvature. Let's start. Uh, let's grab this piece here. This piece is coming out of um, out of ZBrush, and as you can see, it's a decimated mesh. And uh, is there UV on it? Window model editor, UV editor. As you can see, there is zero UV on it. So let's go on the camera. Let's turn off bokeh and graphic exposure let's change the resolution to 800 and let's make an IPA render and see what we are getting so it's starting to render so as you can see I can rotate my camera around my object and uh, the UV are still in place. And when I say UV, I mean the projection, sorry. There is genuinely no UV as I can show you. Now, another stuff I could do is drop the projection into my main group and just rotate the main group. And as you can see, everything is rotating together and everything follow. So then now let's look at how I really do it. What I have is fairly simple. I start with the paint material. The paint material is my roughness map, my bump map, my base color, and my metallic. All of that is placed in a tree planar projection texture out of Maya. How do you create a tree planar? Will you ask him? File. But instead of clicking on file like this, now you go with the left button, you go with the right button. And what did I do here? Uh, no, you have to actually go here, sorry. And he, he, if you remove one node and create a new one, like here, you can go in the file and then right click, create texture or create as a projection. So again, I'm not cutting my video. I'm fairly late, middle of the night, probably one o'clock and I'm kind of tired, but I really want to get that out because people are asking for it. So. Let's study that just a little bit. Uh, let's grab a piece here, or maybe something bigger. Mm. Let's grab uh, this one, the tail, and let's draw the paint material. And then we will just IP this area here. So you can see my paint material is fairly simple. What I get in my paint material is a texture out of Substance Designer, which I did create here. Like super simple from super simple. It is two material. It is uh, metal, paint with some roughness in there. I did throw a Q 
custom crunch map. So far so good. Then I did some magic here where I grab some scratch, lay them on top of each other, further lay those two materials on top of each other, and I get the result of that. And then I export my texture. And those textures is what I plug in Maya as a tree planner projection. So when I have my material established, like here, the next step is to do my dirt, simple material, there is no texture on it. And then I do a mud material, which is here, where I actually throw some texture on it and play a little bit with um, color adjustment. Color balance here. Uh, actually, where did I do it? Uh, here, color offset. Perfect. That's good. SRGB. And I can take my weight down to make it darker a little bit. So now if you look here, you can see my mud is way darker and will tend to disappear with the green. That's why I make it way brighter. Yeah, and the color balance, I could make it more in the green. But I prefer to keep more in the orange dirty. So now you can see it a little bit less. That's why I go back to the red. Okay, just to click the right, the wrong button, it's back to the green, but it's not important. Dirt, the metal, I did create a new metal that I use under the paint and my paint. And then let's look at how we put all of that together. Here, I have a blend material that I call my principal material. That's a material that will go a little bit everywhere. Let's look at it. What do this material do? Well, this material is plug-in. Yeah. The metal as a base, the paint on top of that, the mud, some dirt, dark, and the dirt dark again with another layer of uh, mask. Now, the first mask is interesting, the material of the paint. How do I mask it, actually? Well, if you go here, you realize I'm doing some interesting stuff with the layered texture. Let me find it somewhere. Here's my paint curvature, it's here, and it's plugged in a layered texture where I have a triple R projection for some scratch image that you can view. It's not even, uh, see, I just found it online, not very quickly stuff, just to see what happened. Now, why do I do that? Because it's allow me, if we look at the scratch here, let's see, I move that out of the way. We will zoom a little bit here to the scratch and look here and see what happened with my tree planner. Which come here, we say the scratch go here. And all of that was just a test anyway, right? It's how it started. I was just playing with stuff. But since some of you really want to see how I do it and don't believe that there is no UV, I feel like I really have to show it to you. So I'm looking for my curvature here and my curvature, pen curvature going in reverse and the dirt part in my layer texture and my layer texture. Now I remove the multiplier, you will see what happened. Now, you see what now I'm losing the curvature or I'm adding it here, losing it completely, it's inverted. I can multiply or subtract or difference. Basically, it's just a compositing mode, right? So here, example, is almost completely gone. We just have the small scratch that are in the texture and the curvature. And uh, let's put it back to multiply. Now we get all those scratch here. It's also interesting that uh, there is a logo from some company. Uh, I just realized it's in there. Funny because that texture is not copyrighted. It was a texture that did come with Mudbox at the time, meaning some people did appropriate it to themselves and try to sell it as something that is not. 
anyway um let's zoom a little bit back and look at our curvature node what do the curvature node do? the curvature node is a node that is specific to redshift but i'm pretty sure that there is something similar in all the other render engine here look at the radius 0.4 i'm putting that 0.04 now you will see in this area or oh, everything is changing right so if i have such a nice curvature node why am i doing the compositing of two texture for the for the resin basically i'm using it the same way as i will in substance painter or substance designer with a generator if for the people that are familiar with it what i do in my curvature node is not only do i plug something in where i mix the result of two texture but before the curvature node here in that area i always plug the noise as in the video actually the video showed it to you um the video that you mentioned at the beginning with the chief i use a noise texture that i just put here it's projected as a triple and again and that texture allow me to get some variety in my um my curvature like um, if i change the threshold change a lot of stuff you will see it happen in that area it's hard to see but it's there if you look yes here you can see them in that area here which allow us to break the, the result. So what else do I do? After that, um, oh, important, I reverse my curvature because if you don't reverse your curvature, you will get um, not the result that I want for the metal border. It will work for dirt, but not for metal border. That's why I'm doing it. Again, I will be going way more in detail in an upcoming video. Then I lay off my mud and everything is based on tree planar projection. You see most of them are tree planar now uh, before we go on the next step which is the tail what do i do with the tail the tail is also very easy it's i am grabbing a material which is called tail material and i just grab it there and grab it there so what happened with the tail material it's everything is working with the projection window outliner All those decals that you see are simple uh, projection. Let's see, placed uh, 14 and 15, I think. 13 and 14. Now, if I move them, I should have named them before, better, but it's just a test anyway. If I move them, you can see I'm moving my projection. Obviously, you will want to make sure that you assign the material only on the face that you want to adjust, meaning right now since i did just throw it on the tail if we go on the other side the number will be showing on the other side we don't want that to happen that's why i will have to make sure that i assign a different material which will be the main material so um what else uh, we said we have principal material we have the bump uh, we have the scratch we have the stickers Oh, the last one I want to talk to you about. It's a little funny one. It's, um, you see there's some dirt at the base of the material, right? The base of the ship is dirty and it goes to the top. How did I do that? Well, it's all start in Substance uh, Designer where I grab just a gradient dirt like until I find the right seed, the one I like, something like that maybe. Then in Maya, Let's grab the mud again and make the mud dirtier, more like uh, reddish. It would be uh, easier to see. In Maya, I put the mud as a projection, but I don't do a tree planar. I don't do a planar. The type of projection I'm doing is just a cylindrical. You will see why. Because now I have a cylinder that goes across my ship. Look, if I move my cylinder, look what happened with the mud. The mud will travel up. Let's update a little bit. I'm recording at the same time. But as you can see now, the bottom is clean, the top starts to be dirty. I could even uh, scale that a little bit and then move it down again and have less mud only on the ground if I want. Obviously, the mud is repetitive, right? It's what happening if you had to move it. Like, but I can just do a fit to go box and we will be good. Now we have the mud where we need it. 
we can again we can scale it close it where's my scale here yeah we can scale it and then move it down yeah then we should have a lot less mud and maybe even no mud at the bottom so i think um, this is everything i wanted to show you in this very 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 quick explanation uh, keep an eye open for the full video where i will be really going in detail and slowly um if you like my video feel free to go on my art on my art station yes but also on my gum road and maybe uh, buy a little something that will inspire me and uh, put me in the mood to do that video even quicker um buy some stuff that is cheap and pay whatever you want it's fine um keep an eye open for the next video and i wish you a very good night